If you're throwing a dinner party, it's easy enough to look for inspiration online. It's a different matter for high-profile chefs, and many of them travel to unusual places to discover new ideas for their signature dishes. Chef Dion Vengatas is one of them, and today he presents a menu that's inspired by his travels. When it comes to travelling, not all those who wonder are lost. I am definitely not lost today. I'm meeting up with Dion Vengatas, and we're about to go to Asia. Dion? Hey, how are you? Mwah, mwah. Where are we adventuring to today? We're travelling around Asia. I travelled to Singapore, but Singapore is amazing because it's so pan-Asian. So I got to experience a bit of Malaysia, a bit of Chinese, a bit of Chinese. So we're going to tap into various sort of dishes. I've got a fish head curry that we're going to make that's sort of Malaysian inspired. And then we got the Chinese chicken and rice. And then we got a twist on the Taiwanese mango and sticky rice. But I've sort of worked it with a bit of fermented pears and fresh pears. It's phenomenal. I'm excited for that. We'll taste it later on. Where do we begin our adventure? Let's start off with the chicken and rice. We've got a bit of spring onion over here. We want to take a bit of ginger whole. You don't really need to peel it at all. You want the exterior flavor as well. I've got about three cloves of garlic into your pestle mortar. We just want to lightly smash it. If you look at it, I haven't really smashed the actual garlic or broken it down mm -hmm. completely or else it's going to overpower the broth. The main and important thing about this broth is to get clean chicken flavour. Okay, literally just going to put this into the pot. Then we need to put our water. Once your water's in, you want to bring it to a boil. In the meantime, let's process the chicken for the broth. All right, so what I've got here is a really nice whole chicken, but I've taken a nice free-range bird. It's very important that it's free-range or pasture-reared because the actual carcass of the chicken is much more firmer and stronger. So you're just going to trim all the actual fat that you have on the chicken itself from the top and the bottom. You're just going to put this fat aside in the meantime. What we're going to do now is skewer the chicken with the hooks. Later on, you need to actually hang your chicken. And the hanging of your chicken is what dries it out completely and gives it this nice gelatinous sort of skin that people enjoy with the chicken and rice. Huh. There's two little ends at the carcass that you could probably hook it into over here. Now that we have it skewered, we're just going to plunge it into the water. The water's come to a moderate temperature. Just very gently, you want to move your chicken in and out. Okay. And that's literally just to get the temperature of the chicken to the same temperature as the water. It's very important that we leave the hooks in it and keep the chicken hooked on and just left gently on the side to simmer. I have made some early on, so we have a little bit of broth here. It's going to take some time, about 45 minutes. I'm going to get this in the back so one of my chefs can keep an eye on it. And then in the meantime, we're going to get on to our rice. Okay, pass the pot over there, please. Just grab some of the chicken fat that we've reserved early on. I'm gonna grab some of the oil. You can hear it's rendering already. And then you wanna add a bit of flavoring to it. Just a touch of spring onion. And two cloves of garlic. I've soaked my rice overnight in cold water. Once it's soaked the next day, it's just rinse it about seven times. We're gonna get our rice straight into the bowl we're gonna go and put the broth. A good trick is if you put your palm inside of the actual pot and you pour the water until it just goes over your fingers, that's a good indication of the exact quantity that you need from liquid to rice when cooking it. Next, we use is celery, and I've used a lot of the leaves and the hearts, the inside pieces that are not that harsh, but very subtle as well. This goes literally on top of it. Lastly, that beautiful oil that we made, which is a star that's gonna just bring that more umami to this actual chicken and rice. When you get this chicken fat on top of it, Coming back from Singapore and my travels, I just fell in love with this dish and it took me months and months to figure it out because it's so simple but there's a lot of techniques and steps in between that take it to another level. So let's get this on the boil and then we can start with our condiments. So we need a pestle mortar for most of them. We're going to start off with the spring onion dip. We basically need to put a bit of ginger and a bit of spring onion that I've lightly sliced. And then that beautiful chicken fat, we need to put that into our pestle mortar. On the side of your pestle mortar, just gently smash it. It's basically the first dip. It's really, really easy to make. That's the one dip. We're going to move over to our ginger, garlic and chili. Start off with your garlic and slice the chili just to aid in the pestling of it when we start smashing it down. Smash your garlic gently on the side of it. Lightly smashed, it's not too fine. Then I'm gonna get my chili in. We literally wanna smash it until the entire thing turns a light red. Sort of tinge that's coming. I'm gonna get our ginger in lastly. 
Okay, that chicken broth we kept aside early on, very importantly for this step. Again, the chicken fat, the broth has been used in so many other aspects as well. And then muddle it all together just to bring those flavors in. And that's our second condiment done. And then the last one's very simple. Whatever flavor's still left in here is just gonna add to that last step. Soy sauce, sesame oil. Okay, so that's the last dip, sesame and soya dip. Mm. That's the condiments for the chicken and rice, very importantly. Let's move over to the rice and see the cooking of that. It's already cooked and we've just got it steaming now. Do you want to do the honors? Yes! Go for okay. it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh my word. At this point, you just want to like sort of ruffle out your celery and then keep that aside. So that's the rice done, chicken and rice ready just to plate up. Let's move over to the fish curry. I'm going to start off with a good helping of canola oil, sesame oil with a touch of fish sauce in the centre. I'm going to bring this to a medium to high heat. If you can pass the spices over there, we have fenugreek, which is matibaji. Equal quantities of black mustard seeds and yellow mustard seeds. So we added the lemongrass and lots of curry leaves in the beginning. At this point, you just want to lightly stir it around just to get your curry leaves sizzling. If you can pass the onions, once your onions start sweating off and you get a little bit of browning on it, you want to turn your heat down to a medium. The spices are starting to stick at the bottom. This is when we want to add our grind spices, which is the masala mix. We want to add our ginger, garlic and chilli. It's equal quantities of the garlic, ginger and chilli. Pick the heat up to a medium high again. At this point, we can add our parsley. We can add our coconut cream. Mm. Then we're going to get some of our chicken stock in. That same umami, marvellous chicken broth that we made earlier on. At this point here, it's on a low simmer. What we want to do is get our fish heads in. That's the cheeks and the heads. If you look at the heads over here, it's very important that the cleaning process, it's got to be like white, white, white. Through the gills, just run it under clean water until every little piece of it is clean. Let's evenly distribute the actual heads and the cheeks in the sauce. And now we want to get a little bit of the first seasoning process of the actual dish, but the salt and the pepper inside. If you can just pass the brinjals and the baby marrow to me, please. We dry the brinjals out just so you can soak up more of the flavor when it's actually cooking in. It becomes a bit spongy. Now pass the baby marrow, please. Just place your baby marrow in because we don't want to mix everything up like a poiki. Now we're literally just going to add a bit of the tamarind paste. Just a touch of the tamarind. You can see I added it to the middle, so I'm just using the center to ruffle it up so it can melt in and then it will get distributed over. We just want to get these two babies and squeeze it over the top. So at this point, all we're going to need is a little bit of time. And you are not talking about the herb yet. No, not, not the herb I do anymore. not think we have time. <laughs> this must be eaten now. I guess you could eat it now, but we just want the flavors to come together. So we let it simmer for about 10 minutes mm. on a very low heat and then it's ready to eat. But at least this is my favorite part of the day now. Dessert! Let's go over to our sticky rice. We're just gonna grab our pears. Let's talk about about these pears. This looks like a pear in despair. <laughs> okay, it is a pear in despair, but it's a pear that has so much flavor in it. What we've done with it is we've salted it lightly, just seasoned a little bit of salt, rubbed it a little bit of moisture on. I put it into my dehydrator. Seven days later, you have this beautiful dried fermented pear. I found the combination of the fresh pear and the sticky pear works phenomenal together. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's start with the actual processing of the pear. We're just gonna peel some of your actual pears, very simple. We literally only did half of it. Let's cut a bit of this. Can you see what happens to oh, it? Oh, wow. Ooh. We just want to slice this baby. It's got this beautiful sort of like leather texture on the outside mm -hmm. and it's got this sort of dried fruit meets lightly salty pickly pear, fresh pear like they do in Thailand. Let's keep that aside. So we've got our pear, fermented fresh. So for the rice, oh my word, it's perfect. Just some of the coconut cream that we've infused with the sugar. Just a little bit into start of it. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. Okay. Just gently fold it until it sort of becomes sticky. I don't add a lot of sugar to my coconut cream because I don't like it too sweet though. So that's obviously up to your preference. That's perfect. You'll know when it's right if it falls in sort of two or three clumps. Zach, can you pass me the bowl, please? That's literally plating up. Uh, just a dollop. And then we literally just lay our pears up. That's our sticky rice. Let's go plate up that fish curry. Shall we? Awesome stuff. This is like the best part of the curry. And most of the time, it's not even you eating it because you're dishing it out for others. I think it's always better the day afterwards. Oh, definitely, yeah. Wow. 
So that's a fish curry, and then we have our chicken and rice, the condiments and some of the broth we serve it with, and then our sticky rice with the curve ball and the pear and fermented pear. Wow. Mm. I have no words, I am so happy. Oh my word. Eating is my favorite part of traveling, and Dion has made my day. Very welcome, love. <laughs>